What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this nuking experiment. In this one, we're going to be seeing what happens when we nuke the versus event Monster Mash. Now this is another experiment that is going to be really tricky to line up because this Monster Mash event doesn't spawn that frequently. And in case you haven't experienced this, first off, it spawns down at Watoga High School. Sometimes when you enter the high school, that will actually trigger the event to start up and you will get this dialogue over the intercom teachers and students to Watoga High School's annual Monster Mash. Please gather in the commons and await your instructions. Teachers, race to find the Monster Mask. After you get it, run from the students. As you flee, candy will fall from holes in the mask. Be sure to collect as much as possible. The more candy you collect, the more supplies you will be awarded from next year's discretionary budget. There are also stashes of candy hidden around the school. Find them and refill the mask. Students, you must chase and hit the monster mask with your baseball bats like a pinata. You can keep any candy that falls out of the mask, or you can make the smart choice and turn it in for prizes. And remember, this is the only time it is permitted to hit a teacher while on school grounds, and only the one wearing the mask. On your marks, get ready, go! And there are loads and loads of feral ghouls that will spawn in here when this event is actually triggered. And what you have to do during this is find the actual monster mask and run around collecting candy out of these pumpkin buckets. And while you're collecting the candy, you're going to have to be worrying about the loads of feral ghouls because if they hit you, you'll actually lose some candy. Also, you're going to have to be worrying about other players. You're going to have a red indicator over you when you're actually wearing the monster mask. So it can be pretty terrifying. And there will be multiple rounds during this event. The player with the most candy at the end, obviously wins it and the reward for winning is halloween candy and you can basically save this up to get some prizes as far as i've seen though there aren't really that great of prizes out of doing this basically one star legendaries however you can turn these in for script so i guess that's something also not to mention halloween candy can be sold in vending machines and i was told that players do buy them i haven't actually tried to sell them myself i also would like to know if you've gotten anything crazy out of doing this event. Like I mentioned, all my rewards have been one star legendaries from the special prize that requires 5,000 Halloween candy. I haven't grinded it much lately. This is actually old footage over back in the day when I was grinding as well as getting help from my buddies to stock up on candy to see what we would actually get rewarded. And it turned out nothing too special. Once again, I would love to hear what you all have gotten from this. Maybe you've had better luck than I have. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and see what happens though when we nuke this event just because of all the ghouls that spawn in here. Like I mentioned before, there are endless amounts that keep spawning. So this should be interesting. All right, so for the first time, I waited up in the silo for let's just say too much time. And one of my buddies was down at Watoga trying to get the event to trigger. Eventually after hanging around the vicinity and going in and out of the high school so many times, it finally started up. So I decided to nuke the actual event that popped up on the map while my buddy was inside the building waiting on me to get there. And surprisingly, the results were pretty bad for some reason. For some reason, there were less enemies that spawned than usual. Typically, there are loads and loads of feral ghouls that spawn during this event. I'm sure any of you that have participated in the Monster Mash can agree with me on that. However, our experience was the complete opposite. We did, though, get glowing ones on like the second or third round. The downfall about that was there were only like four or five glowing ones that spawned. After that, there were just regular old feral ghouls. And like I mentioned before, there were not that many. So when this happened, we started talking about reasons why this might have happened. Like why were there not that many feral ghouls than usual at this event? Because we still were participating in this event. We were still trying to collect candy with the mask and there were not that many that were spawning. Not to mention, pretty much none of them turned into glowing ones besides like four or five. I don't get why only like four or five turned into glowing ones and the rest were just regular old feral ghouls. It just wasn't making any sense to us. It could have been because we actually nuked this location 
and that lessened the amount that we get to experience actually during this event. We honestly had no idea. So we decided to set up again Nuke in this area, and let's just say it took quite a bit of time for this next experiment that we tried to do on this event. We decided that we would actually launch the nuke first and wait for the event to appear. Now this was trickier just because sometimes the event wouldn't even spawn, and most of you probably know how long a nuke zone can last. It can last a really long time. So eventually, after like launching two or three different nukes down at this area, just hoping that the event would appear, it finally did. This was very time consuming to actually get this experiment lined up correctly, just because of waiting on the event to actually spawn. And the reason why we were actually doing it this way is because we thought the reason why there were only a few amount of glowing ones that spawned last time is because there was already someone that triggered the event and was inside the building. So we thought, hey, maybe if we just launch the nuke there and wait for the event to spawn up, there will for sure be some glowing ones that will pop up. And turns out we were let down sadly, again. It would have been freaking awesome to see an endless amount of glowing ones to take on during the Monster Mash event, but sadly it just doesn't happen like that. Once again, there were only like four or five glowing ones that spawned. And not to mention, there were not that many feral ghouls as there typically are without the nuke zone being there. So I have a feeling it does have something to do with the nuke actually being around in Watoga. I think it does affect what you experience during this. Oh, and if you're wondering what the heck I was doing here, I was trying to get a cinematic view. That's the reason why I went into camera mode. I was trying to get a cinematic shot of the glowing ones that did spawn. It was a complete fail. I did get sworn by them. And what you're seeing here is pretty much all the glowing ones that we experienced throughout this event. But yeah, nonetheless, this was an interesting experiment. I had a good feeling that this would actually be a really good experiment to do and we would get tons of experience. Sure, we may not get ingredients that we need like glowing mass, hardened mass from glowing ones that are inside an area that requires a loading screen to get into while being in a nuke zone. We learned that from the burrows. All those glowing ones down in there do not contain any ingredients like glowing mass and hardened mass that we need to craft specific things. But they do give a great amount of experience and they still do provide glowing meat at least. Either way, this series is all about testing to see what happens if. And we learned that nothing particular happens after nuking the monster match, which really surprised me. It really did. I had a good feeling about this experiment, obviously, because I invested a lot of time into this experiment to actually see what would happen. And yeah, I was totally let down. But anyways, that's about wrapping up this video, everybody. Hopefully you still found this enjoyable. As always, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like. Your support is greatly appreciated for this series. And if you have a location that you want us to experiment with or maybe an event that you would like us to experiment with, feel free to jot it down in the comments. We may take it into consideration. I'm out of here, though, everybody. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.